signs for some t-shirts. We kind of had an idea that uh, to be, it's good to have that group recognition. And Pastor Ellen and I were in a meeting earlier in the week with one of my advisors at the seminary. And we found that the best way to get people to come to church is to ask them to come with you. That being said, 99% of the time, people don't ask other people to come to church with them. So the idea is to have a t-shirt with the slogan of UCC, ask me, and maybe encourage people to ask us a little bit when they see us out and about, about coming to our church and checking us out. So that is all I have for this week, and uh, I'm going to slide you back in with its movie tickets. That's what it like day for the movie. Well, I will be out front of the theater, and I will get, get, be getting tickets to everybody. You can pay me right then. Okay. It looks like it's going to be eleven dollars a person. Right. In which theater is it? Annapolis Mall. Um, so I've been visiting and calling Steve Jaron. He's in the rehab center up in Catonsville. Um, I've got his phone number and his address back on the back bulletin board near where the um, birthdays are posted. So if you would like to give him a call or send him a card, he would love to get him. He's really uh, bored in between times of him doing his PT. Any other announcements? Um, I did want to share that um, this upcoming weekend, there will be a Native American festival at the Howard County Fairgrounds. Um, I've been going very habitually for over a decade now. It's a lot of fun. Uh, they wear their uh, traditional regalia. They have authentic Native American uh, tribes come out um, and they perform. They have drumming, they have activities for the kids, and they even invite you to dance if that's anything that uh, you all may be interested in. I I think I forwarded the email to you, Pastor Ellen. Mm -hmm. It was in the bulletin as well. Oh, it was in the bulletin. Information. And it will be in next week. Okay, but yes, if you all be looking at the phone.
I'm especially grateful to be here today because I'm going to spend time with my nephew after church, and I'm very excited. Uh, let us pause for a moment and present and be present in this space. Let us in silence reflect on the truth of how we feel in body and spirit in this moment. has called us together today in worship. Let us give that call voice with our call to worship. Please stand. God, you are among us. Open, Open our, our eyes, eyes to see you. You are doing miracles every day. Open our hearts to receive you. You empower us to do miracles too. Open, Open our hands to serve you. In, in gratitude and trust, we worship you. you. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and also with, with you. you. Share our sign of peace with each other by commenting on the live stream page. In our send a text to someone or shout peace to the world. Peace, peace to the world. world. Peace to the world. Peace. 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 peace.
Open your hearts to the one who is love. We open our hearts to you, O oh God. Let, it, let us give thanks to God who gathers us together, to the one who welcomes us to the table. We give thanks and praise. God, your invitation to come and feast in your presence is but a taste of the love you extend to us every day. By your very nature, you are always seeking us out, searching for ways to connect us and connect with us. You meet us in the most ordinary of places, and you make them sacred. By your grace, we come to recognize the holiness that dwells in the world around us, in our neighbors, and in ourselves. On the night of his arrest, Jesus shared a meal with it with his companions. He took he took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the meal, he took the cup and blessed it and uh, gave it to his disciples saying, this cup is poured out, that, that is poured out as the new covenant. Pour your spirits out on these gifts, O oh God. Make these ordinary element, elements into the sacred gift of your presence with us once again. May they awaken us anew to your everlasting invitation into a life of resurrection. Enliven us in our pursuit of a world where all needs are met, Power is balanced, and the worth of every creature and creation is celebrated. In collecting longing for a taste of your kingdom on earth, we join together in echoing the, the prayer of Jesus. Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Come, for all things are ready.
us pray together. God, by the bread of heaven and the cup of new life, you make us one body. Bind us together by your spirit that we might live into your hopes for us, a community centered in Christ and rich in compassion, commitment, courage, and care. Amen. Listen now in the reading of scripture for the word and wisdom of God. We open our hearts in the word and wisdom of God. Good News Translation Jesus left that place and went back to his hometown, followed by his disciples. On the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue. Many people were there, and when they heard him, they were all amazed. Where did he get all of this? They asked. What wisdom is this that has been given to him? How does he perform miracles? Isn't he the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon? Aren't his, aren't his sisters living here? And so they rejected him. Jesus said to them, Prophets are respected everywhere except in their own hometown and by their relatives and their family. He was not able to perform any miracles there except that he placed his hands on a few sick people and healed them. He was greatly surprised because he did not have faith. Then Jesus went to the villages around there, teaching the people. He called the twelve disciples together and sent them out two by two. He gave them authority over the evil spirits and ordered them, Don't take anything with you on the trip except a walking stick. No bread, no beggar's bag, no money in your pockets. Wear sandals, but don't carry an extra shirt. He also told them, Wherever you are allowed, or wherever you are welcome, stay in the same house until you leave that place. If you come to a town where people do not welcome you or will not listen to you, leave it and shake the dust off of your feet. That will be a warning to them. So they went out and preached that people should turn away from their sins. They drove out many demons and brought olive oil on many sick people and healed them. Then that uh, no one should know this and told them to give them something to or uh, give her something to eat. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Thanks be to God. I think that last line was something extraneous from another Sunday. <laughs> Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer.
25 people. And we rarely passed more than 15. The congregation, and that was not in the summertime when people are on vacation like they are now. The congregation was a remnant of a typical, fairly conservative, mainline Protestant church that had had a schism. There was a difference of opinions and many people left. And then there was also the usual younger, you know, the, the children and grandchildren of the people who were there who don't go to church or go to a different church. Anyway, they, they still had offices and meeting space and they still worshiped in the same building they had always had. But they had sold the building to a vineyard congregation and Vineyard USA is an association of charismatic evangelical congregations, which although each congregation is given autonomy in biblical interpretation, so teaching may vary from one congregation to another. For instance, some congregations have, would have a, a woman uh, lead pastor, but others might not do that at all. Well, the vineyard congregation that bought our building at a discount so that we would still have space there, they built a new worship space, which and it was big, and it included a stage, a, a, a professional stage with real stage lighting and a huge screen and a large booth at the back where all the tech was managed, and of course, uh, you know, they had lots of people to do tech. And uh, we are so grateful for having Kathy to do our tech. Um, and uh, our, they had a, like a green room, a room off stage for m musicians, pastors, and guest speakers where they could go wait for their time on the stage. And a large auditorium for the congregation furnished with comfortable, stackable chairs. And there are no hymnals because they have the screen and folks bring their own Bibles if they choose. There is no organ, uh, there is no piano, there is a keyboard. The worship band plays published and they had a composer among them, so an original, mostly rock type worship songs that are easy to learn and repeated several times. And of course, folks there are invited to come as they are, and they do. Especially, they come, 300 to 400 people or more per service, and they have two services. And they come in comfortable clothes, jeans mostly, for they do sincerely believe that God, who knows who they, that God knows who they are and loves them as they are, and therefore there's no need to dress up for God because God knows, God knows who we are. We don't have to look good. And being comfortable is the key word for them. They're invited to worship where their physical comfort is important. The chairs, their clothing, clothing, the easy to learn music played by a great band with top-notch singers. The message preached to them is that they are loved and they are called to love in return, as long as you're not LGBTQ. Their mission outreach is incredible in many ways, providing gifts to hundreds of children at Christmas and hundreds of backpacks to school children each August, as well as all kinds of, they also had like a, every, every Thursday night they had a dinner that anybody could go to. I've often wondered what would happen to a congregation like ours if we were to form a band and sing music with more of a rock beat, if we were to remove the pews and replace them with comfortable chairs that were easy to move around, if we were to use a screen and PowerPoint instead of hymnals and bulletins, and if we were to continue to be open and affirming justice and a justice-seeking justice congregation of the UCC, and we wouldn't use contemporary, uh, Christian contemporary praise music because the theology of the songs that's published is not inclusive or expansive. But there are other songwriters who have written other songs that we can sing. If that were to happen, how many of you would run out the doors? How 
many would really think you would find any meaning in this change of style? I think some of you would. Maybe not all of you, but I think, I think some would. Would you be willing to try it? Would you be willing to experiment with something that is radically different and stick with it long enough to see the results? That's the issue. I know many UCC congregations who have tried something new, but the current members couldn't bear even trying it out. I know a church in New Jersey where um, a group of people uh, appointed by the congregation worked with the Center for Progressive Renewal, which is an organization that was at the time we had a con the conference had a contract that they would come in and help people renew and revitalize their worship. Now this church was kind of a, a typical New england style church on the inside. And when folks came back, and in the summer they always worshiped in this chapel, but when folks came back in September to their new sanctuary, they knew there were going to be changes. But what they didn't expect it that was that the walls would be painted a soft kind of pinkish color and that there would be draperies to um, accent some parts of the, the area up here and and they had a fit. People who were not in on it, most of them had a fit. And a few years later that church closed. Yeah. They, they were so angry that those, those people who were them, part of them, would do such a thing, even though they knew that there was going to be change. When they saw the change, they were, they were horrified. So, you know, oh, the discomfort that comes with change. It drives us crazy, for we have depended, many of us have depended on the church not to change in the midst of our ever-changing world. I've had people come up to me and say, I just like knowing that the one thing that isn't changing is my church. Yes. <laughs> well, and they also feel that if God, they feel that God is unchangeable, and so then the church must be also. Well, the reality is that the church has always changed over the years. We don't know our church history. It's always changed. At one time it was unthinkable to sing a hymn unless the words came right out of scripture. And at one time, the organ was called the devil's noise. So, and, and now it's, you know, we love our organ. Therefore, many progressive UCC churches have remained very traditional in worship style. While there are conservative UCC churches who continue to embrace traditional worship, I think they may be more likely to have a band and sing praise songs, have drums, a drum kit in the sanctuary, because those that worship style and those songs come with a more conservative theology and a conservative worldview. As the Center for Progressive Renewal has asked churches, what would you do, what kind of change would you put up with if it meant that your grandchildren would come to church. Because trappings can be changed. You know, the New Century Hymnal is an excellent example of enabling us to sing hymns we know and love using inclusive language for God and humankind and without warlike or violent imagery. And yet think of how the New Century Hymnal is sometimes called awful because of those very changes. You messed with the words of my Christmas carols. Because we are being asked to sing new words to old songs. In this morning's scripture reading, Jesus has done the unthinkable. His actions have encouraged people who had him pigeonholed as being one sort of person. Son of Joseph and Mary, he's got these brothers and sisters, he's a carpenter's son. So they balked and got angry when he behaved as someone who had something to teach them. How 
dare be claimed such authority, even when, even when it could make them feel better. They couldn't do it. They couldn't stand it. They rejected him. So Jesus said to his disciples, prophets are respected everywhere except in their own hometown and by their relatives and their family. It's all about fear of change, especially when change might mean elevating a person in our esteem. It might mean we have that person in that box that, oh my gosh, we have to not think of them that way anymore. I think that, I think that comes into play, especially when we think about people who have mental illness, how we're kind of afraid, but if we go further, we find their humanity. I find that there's a person there who just wants to be like us, but is unable, but is still a child of God and someone God loves. Yes, it's all about change. It's about a style or a way of speaking or singing or a way of praying or dressing or the seat we sit on. And to be clear, I don't know that adopting a contemporary worship style will enable this church to grow. But it might. I would not want to give up all the hymns, but I could make room for new songs, and some of them might become my new favorites. If making changes would open our doors to more people, would you be willing to try them, even if it turned out to be something you really hated? <laughs> because believe me, God asked people in the Bible to do a lot of things they didn't want to do. Well, we don't necessarily need a rock band, but think of when Amy and her musicians were here. Guitar, violin, bass. Imagine Ed, Ed, maybe, maybe Greg would play his ukulele every week and our piano and organ, and maybe we could find somebody who plays flute and clarinet or oboe and drums. We have a drummer. That could be so good, so very good. There are so many possibilities. Not all, not all present day Christian music is junk. So think about that and pray about that and wonder, speculate. Speculate among, talk among yourselves about it, you know? Um, don't talk about me, talk about the church. What, you know, what, what ideas could you come up with? Um, so check your heart and your mind. What are you open to? If, if, you could do, if you could be open, if you're, or you feel like there's no way you could be open, could you or would you consider trying something new for the good of the church? Isn't that what Jesus asked the 12 disciples when he sent them out two by two to share the gospel and cast out demons and heal the sick? And on top of that, he commanded them to take no food, no money, not even a change of clothing. Talk about change. They had probably grown very comfortable as followers of the great man. Um, and now they were thrust into becoming as Jesus himself, going out teaching and healing, depending on the kindness of strangers to feed and house them. Jesus was not able to perform any miracles in his hometown, except for a few people who, who got better. And he was surprised that he couldn't, but the people did not have faith. This healing thing is a two-way street. It was a wonder he could heal anyone. So we must have faith that God will tr transform us into a place of teaching and healing that will attract people who need it and need us. Pray for our church that we have faith. Faith to expect an answer when we pray. Faith that allows us to be willing to bear change and faith so that we may be healed and that we may heal others. And faith that what is taught here is truly the good news of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. And don't worry, I'm not going to do anything without talking, <laughs> without talking to you about it.
Let us take a few moments to sit in silence with God. We are deeply appreciative to receive the offering for the life and work of this beloved community. We thank God for the gift of this church and its many blessings in our lives. Let us give generously.
We ask continued prayers for Fawn's little sister, our little sister Stacy in Florida. Um, she has four new tumors in her brain. One is quite large in her brain stem. Um, they are going to do a very extensive radiation where she has to be still for two hours to try to basically burn these tumors out. And she was told that she's not going to get better, and she was able to hear that. And um, that he said it's going to be like black and mole. They're going to do an MRI every month and look for tumors growing, and they're going to try to treat them. Um, she's already down to 120 pounds, and um, so the cancer's taking its toll on her, and we just ask that you pray for her. And she goes through this, and um, also no one is enough is enough for her. God, in your grace and mercy, hear our prayers. prayers. Um, I'm looking for prayers, I'm looking for support um, in these next two and a half months of my final phase of my work. Um, retiring on September 30th, I do have a new person that I'm training, but I just want to, as I finish a 40-year career of running companies, I just want to relax and enjoy these last two and a half months as I exit out of this new phase of my journey in life. So. God, in your grace and mercy, your prayers. I would like to ask for continued prayers for my son Christopher. He has finished uh, the radiation of his throat cancer, and um, now they're waiting to see what the result is. And it won't be for a while that they will find out. So please keep Christopher in your prayers that he actually will have gotten rid of this cancer. Thank you. God, in your grace and mercy, hear our prayers. I'd like to ask for prayers for my son's girlfriend, Natalia, as she flies back to Ecuador um, today. So please, prayers for a, a safe journey. God, in your grace, hear our prayers. That's a bad one. Okay. I know we mentioned Steve Jarrett, but if we could just keep him in prayer, he's in physical rehab now. He's had lots of different problems with getting a phone and knowing where his belongings are. And some of that seems to be coming together, but his support system is really, um, is really um, scattered and in some cases non-existent. So if we can pray for him as he progresses through um, physical therapy and um, looking for his return home, some of us are probably going to have to gather and help him get settled in his own. But just pray for Steve. He's pretty lonely. Thank you. And, and uh, God, your grace and mercy. Your prayer. Your prayer. And I'd like you to know that I am in touch with Steve's sister out in Minnesota. And so is Fawn, right? I, I've not talked to the sister. But okay, but Fawn has been seeing Steve. So we, we are connected. Friends, we now pause in silence to hold, these pr to hold those prayers which we have not given voice to today. God, in your grace and mercy, hear, hear our, our prayers. prayers. Let us now conclude our prayer with the prayer for peace, saying, O loving God, God, spirit of hope and peace, lead us from death to life, lead us from falsehood to truth, Lead us from despair to hope, from fear to trust. Lead us from hate to love, from war to peace. Let peace fill our hearts, our world, our universe. Peace, peace, peace.
May the grace of Jesus Christ and the love of God and the companionship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore.